Once again, welcome to Auto 16 webinar on advanced feature. So today, the main agenda behind this webinar is to really trade our end users and public with Auto 16 uh, advanced feature. That is, we'll be focusing on the new features of Auto 16. So before going to the session, let me introduce about myself and about my company. Myself, Shabna, functional consultant from Cybrosis. And we are one of the fastest growing companies and ISO certified software solution in Odoo. And we provide all types of ERP services and covers all, most all industries. We have a very strong reputation for large and successful Odoo projects and possess highly skilled developers at our development center based in India. We offer services in Odoo ERP implementation, Odoo customization, support and maintenance, Odoo migration and integration, Odoo apps development, and employee outsourcing services in Odoo. Now let's discuss why Odoo ERP. You may wonder, uh, there are a lot of ERPs available and every day uh, this Odoo is becoming more and more popular. And currently we have 7 million users for Odoo. So the main thing is that Odoo is basically an open ERP which comprises large collection of business related applications like our customer relationship management, sales management, e-commerce and website, then warehouse and purchase management, accounting, manufacturing management, HRMS, etc. And all these basic modules are collectively uh, we called it as enterprise resource planning software. So apart from this 84 uh, main basic module, Odo has more than 34,000 plus third party apps or plugins that are available in the Odo app store. Each of them is custom built for different user needs. And these applications stand ahead of time and fulfill every business requirement. And this software is uh, easily adaptable in every industry type, whether it is a banking institution or a trading company or a manufacturing company and all. And it is cost effective when compared to other proprietary ERP models. And we have freedom uh, from licensing costs when it comes to uh, community addition. And uh, there is uh, a large possibilities of uh, customizations and integrations. And every year, Odo releases uh, new versions with new upgrades and improvisations on the current functionality. And uh, uh, this, if we uh, implement or uh, deploy the uh, Odo ERP uh, at the enterprise level, we'll be able to get unlimited functional support and we'll be having global support from Odo forum and mailing list as well. And if you have been using Odo, you might know that uh, Odo is highly flexible and uh, highly user friendly UI. Now let's look into the features of uh, Odo 16 okay first comes the sales and purchase module so uh, when compared to 15 Odo 16 consists of new promotion program types like discounts loyalty uh, gift cards in e ballot and uh, currently we'll be able to uh, add the in code terms for our orders and invoices also we'll be able to link the opportunity with the sale order and when it comes to purchase module, uh, the call for tender option, like the purchase agreement call for tender option is, uh, there is a structural change for call for tender and we will be able to compare the RFQ lines of the uh, RFQs. Then uh, we'll be able to get the purchase history price. That is, if we purchase a, a particular product at different prices from the same vendor, for a future purchase order, we'll be able to identify what are the purchase prices, that is history of the purchase prices, which will be available in the Odo. Now let's see the sales module. Let's go to our sales module. So I'm going to configuration settings. Let's see how this features work. So in the configuration settings under the pricing section, you'll be able to see this option. Instead of promotion and coupon programs, it is uh, discounts, loyalty, and gift cards. 
so this will uh, this feature encourage our customer to continue to shop and boost your sales with multiple programs like promotion coupon and all so specific conditions can be set on the product customers or minimum purchase amounts and periods etc and also rewards can be in discounts or uh, in uh, as a free product or as a free shipping as well and uh, one more feature is that under the shipping that is the in quote terms which means we'll be able to display the in quote terms in the sale order itself okay so let's enable this two feature once we enable this and save we'll be able to get uh, the discounts and loyalty as well as gift cards and e-wallet over here okay so let's go to the uh, discounts and loyalty here you can see different programs are there and the different program types are there so coupons will be the next order coupon discount code loyalty card by x get by options are there so in the previous cases like in 15 we'll be only having the promotion type and the coupon when it comes to the program type currently we'll be having other more feature like loyalty card discount code by x get y and next order coupon etc so let's see how these features are working okay so here there is already some uh, feature uh, some uh, options are created like some pro promotions or programs are created so let's go with five percentage on next order that is it is a next order coupon and here you can see the details the description like it drive repeat purchases uh, sending a unique a, uh, a single use coupon code for the next purchase when the customer buys something from your store so the currency usd coupon points and uh, whether we want to show the point so we have to enable this and the program trigger and uh, its usage so this will be uh, available when we uh, enable the uh, developer mode okay so program trigger is automatic and use point is on future order so next order that is this uh, promotion type can be used on the next order coupon and we'll be having the validity uh, limit usage etc and another uh, important thing is that currently we'll be able to use the same uh, programs in point of sale sales and in the website so if it is point of sale if it is available in the point of sale you can mention in which all point of sale this will be available and uh, for which of website uh, this will be available so you can mention that or you can leave it as empty so this will be applicable to every website and every point of sale and under the rewards and condition we can set the conditional rules like uh, when uh, this uh, promotion programs can be used and what will be the reward so this kind of things will be able to uh, create under the conditional rule. so here the conditional rule is if the customer is purchasing minimum one quantity with a minimum purchase amount of 100 which is tax included and any product the domain is set like any product any category or uh, any product tag okay so they will be granted with one point per order okay and in the reward section you can see in uh, exchange of that uh, one reward uh, one point uh, the reward can be added so here you can see in exchange of that one uh, point you can get 15 percentage discount on the cheapest product or on the order itself or on the specific product itself so let's say this okay here you can see certain coupons are already generated from a uh, different purpose okay so let's go to sale order and the condition is that if i'm purchasing uh, say it is this particular customer lumper and if this customer is purchasing any product so i'll be uh, that is i'll be creating a quotation sales quotation for accuracy block screen that the customer is trying to uh, purchase this product okay so it's minimum one quantity and the amount is greater than 295 including the tax that is greater than 100 which is 295 including the uh, tax amount 
and uh, let's confirm this order and uh, you can see the uh, order is confirmed so you will be able to get a next order coupon like in the next order coupon you can see it is now 7 so this is a uh, next order coupon which is generator you can see the order reference over here so when you go to that you can see that so this customer will receive uh, a coupon code a coupon code over here so either we can send this by mail like from the coupons will be able to share this to your customer so he can redeem this uh, 15 percentage discount on his cheapest product on the cheapest product of his next sale so let me copy this and uh, if if i'm trying to create one more order for the same customer okay so let's again go into the sales quotation and i'm creating uh, i'm adding a cabinet with doors and uh, maybe another product with uh see okay maybe another product uh chair flow protection so it is 12 dollar so as i'm applying that coupon code either we can apply coupon code or the promotion so as i'm applying the coupon code and you can see the rewards what are the rewards available rewards and you can choose the available uh, choose the one from the available and you can see uh, on the cheapest product like 15 percent discount on the cheapest product is uh, discounted like 15 percent each of 12 okay so this is uh, how the coupons are added and uh, for uh, loyalty card as well as we see uh, this will be there will be some code so we'll be applying as coupon uh, same to coupon and here whatever the condition we set is might be different so here you can see the uh, for loyalty card uh, the triggering will be automatic and the point can be used on the current or in the future order so here when you go to over here like the minimum quantity like if customers purchase a minimum quantity of one uh, there is one item and he will uh, receive 10 points per spend that is if he spend one dollar he'll receive 10 points and in exchange of some points he may get some rewards so here right now it is a free product which is simple pen and uh, he will get uh, like five uh, that is he uh, that is in exchange of the uh, five uh, points he'll receive one free product okay so basically we'll be applying this loyalty coupon code in the sale order itself and we'll be having maybe uh, the coupons discount code is also similar uh, so this you can see it is discount code were in the conditional rule will be applying a discount code so in the sale order as we are uh, as a customers uh, purchasing what we'll do, use is that this discount code as provided as a coupon code 10 pc so uh, this person will be able to get the reward like 20 percentage of discount on order on the order uh, in exchange of one uh, point and the another method is uh, by x get y which means if the customer is buying three large cabinets he will receive one free that is four cabinets can be purchased at the price of three so here uh, you can see grant one credit for each item bought then reward the customer white y items in exchange of x credit so uh, the basic uh, configuration like its uh, validity of this uh, promotion type or program type it's a uh, validity of usage means how much time we can use it maybe uh, one usage or 10 usages that we can define over here and where it will be available like in the point of sale or in the sales or in the website so this kind of things will be able to apply then when it comes to uh, yeah here the program trigger is automatic and it will be applied on the current order 
okay so let's see the conditional rule so the minimum quantity is provided as 3 and on the product large cabinet and there will be reward with one credit per unit which means if the customer has been purchased three quantity of large cabinet he will receive three credit points that is per unit he will receive one uh, credit so if customer is buying three unit he will receive three credit and in exchange of that three credit what we'll do is that we'll providing uh, another free product as a large cabinet itself and the quantity rewarded is one so you can see the reward type is free product and the product is large cabinet of one quantity extra which will be in exchange of that free credit and there will be an option like clear all promo points which means once we redeem uh, uh, this uh, promotion uh, program types whether it is coupon or uh, discount code etc whatever the remaining uh, balance points in the promotion will be cleared out to zero okay so let's say this again and when we going to sale order and uh, if i'm trying to purchase three large cabinets for deco if i'm trying to purchase large cabinet and the quantity is three and as i'm clicking on the promotion the promotions will be applied so here as i'm clicking on the promotion it will be provided like the available rewards one from the e-wallet that we'll discuss and one from the loyalty program and uh, the other from the large cabinet so whatever the available reward that can be redeemed for him this will be available but one time we'll be able to do uh, choose one reward okay so if it is uh, buy three um, uh, large cabinet and get one free and one free product will be added to your order so when i'm clicking on apply you can see one free product that is large cabinet is added one quantity the unit price but the discount is 100 percent so the total amount is zero okay so this is one of the method now uh, uh we'll be moving to gift cards and e-wallet e-wallets and gift cards are similar uh, it's just like we are we may uh, that is uh, we may generate uh, gift cards for uh, or e-wallets for our uh, customers or customer can buy even gift cards and uh, maybe in future they will be gifted to some relatives or some of our friends and they can be redeemed that gift cards so when you go to gift cards you can see there are two program types actually one is gift card like let me show you as i'm creating for this program there are two program types one is gift card and e-wallet the configurations are similar and the usage is also similar with uh, the coupon code itself so gift card here you can see the gift cards are created either manually or automatically sent by email when the customer orders a gift card product then the gift card can be used to pay orders so the gift card product is a service product so we'll be able to uh, that is while we are uh, managing the gift card products and e-wallet products they will be uh, considered as uh, service products and this is the mail template that will be sent to uh, your customer and the print report and the currency the program type is uh, that is a uh, program trigger is automatic and we use the points on the future order okay and this will be available in the uh, point of sale uh, sales website and all so here we'll be able to uh, uh, set the uh, amount like uh, the gift card amount will be displayed as dollar amount so that will be over there so uh, let's go to one of the order and before that let me go to the products and let's search for gift cards maybe okay so there is a gift card product you can see over here uh, which is a service product and its price is 50 dollars okay so we, so this gift card can be sold so i'm going to orders and uh, let's create a order 
for let's see the decoding and if deco has used one or he has purchased one gift card with worth of 100 okay let's confirm this okay so in the customer preview you will be able to see the details of um, your gift card okay so okay this is the gift card details when it comes to our website so in website uh, how they will be purchasing is that they will be uh, adding uh, this product to cart and then uh, purchase the uh, making payment through the payment acquires let's go back to sales and uh, in the gift cards and e-wallets you can see now it is two gift cards are available one is of 100 so this can be sent to your customer from here or you will be able to uh, print the uh, as a uh, coupon code or as a gift card so you can see this is a uh, gift card coupon okay and this will be the mail uh, template uh, uh, that is sent to your uh, uh, customer and they will be also able to download it so in the future order like they will be able to use this so let's take one of this okay here i'll be uh, trying to use this coupon code let's apply so you can see this gift card which means uh, uh, deco has been uh, purchased this and gifted to lumber so in the next sale of lumber he'll be using uh, this gift card to ready so the gift card amount will be uh, taken and let's confirm so you can see in the like uh, sorry in the uh, gift cards and e-wallet you can see the remaining amount of the gift card that is 24 is get deducted so remaining balance is 74 so if you have enabled that uh, clear promo uh, promo points um, so once the sale is uh, done it will be cleared out so this is similar to e-wallets as well so you can see that which is uh, e-wallets are proposed during the checkout to pay orders and here this is the e valid product so inodo will be keeping this as the service product itself and uh, the email template and currency can also be set and its applicability or uh, how it should be displayed these things and the automatic trigger on future order and we'll be able to generate ballot from here maybe we'll be able to generate specifically for a customer we can add the customer so only Anita Oliver will be having uh, uh, possibility to use this uh, e-wallet for his uh, uh, for her sales okay then uh, next two options are the when you go to your quotation you will be able to see in the uh, other info you will be able to add the in quote terms here you will be able to add your in quote terms this is new and uh, Six, uh, 16 as well as here you will be able to link opportunity to your sale order okay so this is also new feature in odo and uh, once again uh, one more feature is that if you try to uh, like cancelling uh, your uh, confirmed order uh, it will be notified to uh, your customer like when cancelling and uh, sale order already sent to the customer the user has to confirm the cancellation so there is also an option to mail the customer so for this one uh, for this sale order which is already confirmed so if i'm trying to cancel this you can see a pop-up is open where you can see the cancel the sale order and it will ask for a confirmation like are you sure to cancel this order and the recipient is it and the subject will be like this like uh, please be advised that your sale order or sale order number has been cancelled so it should not be no longer charged in the future okay so 
they will be get notified uh, or a mail will be sent to them even we uh, cancel uh, confirm sale order so this is also new in the sales module now we'll move to the purchase module and the purchase module uh, the main two features I notice is that one is the uh, purchase price history like as I'm creating a particular product uh, there is a, a quotation for a particular product for example from Azure uh, okay if I'm purchasing acoustic block screen okay let's save so here you can see a purchase history option so as you click over here you will be able to see uh, the purchase price of your previous history like uh, currently you are purchasing with maybe uh, let's say you are purchasing with 300 dollars so you can see what all purchase prices are the um, for the same vendor for previous purchases you can refer that from here so previously for the purchase order of 17 uh, the unit price is 100 so the purchase history will be available this is one of the feature and you can see one more feature that is in your sale order uh, that is the alternatives okay so this is actually a structural change that uh, come to uh, for our call for tender okay so as you know uh, uh, call for tender is one of the type of uh, the purchase agreement so what we can do is that for example i'll be purchasing two products one is acoustic block screen with uh, 300 dollars uh, and let's say another product like storage uh, box with 200 dollars and maybe one more other product like a whiteboard pen with two dollars okay so i can create an alternator uh, for this purchase order maybe i'll be generating um, uh, this same that, that is i'll be generating a purchase rfq for a different vendor for the same products okay so uh, initially here you can say it is uh, for acoustic we have been uh, charged as uh, 300 and uh, for uh, storage boxes it is 200 and for whiteboard pen it is two dollar okay so uh, i'll be sending this to uh, vendor azure okay so you can see its status will be moved to quotation send now let's create an alternative for this so secondly i'll be sending a quotation for deco addict as well and the copy products will copy all the products in the uh, first purchase order or in the first quotation create an alternative so you can see another bread scrum over here like uh, 27 consisting of the product here what i'm doing is that uh, i'll be uh, initially in the previous order in 26 a purchase order 26 acoustic block stream has been purchased with 300 dollars so currently it is with 200 dollars and uh, here it is uh, maybe 300 dollars and for whiteboard pen i'll be purchasing it with uh, maybe uh, five dollars okay and this i'll be sending to the next vendor as well okay again i'll be creating a third alternative okay so this time i'll be sending to ready made the same product maybe with a higher price okay maybe this time for this uh, from this vendor it is uh, the amount is 500 and uh, this is also 400 and uh, to 10 dollars okay so uh per, so any of the purchase order can be confirmed so it is basically upon the uh, your decision like whether you want to choose the product with a fair price of uh, fair price or uh, based on the best quality and all 
so I'll be sending this quotation to again to the vendor so you can see three quotations are there and it's total and here you will be having that compare product line option so when you go to over here you can see this uh, whiteboard pen i'll be purchasing from three vendor and the storage box also purchasing from this vendor acoustic block as well so we'll be able to choose a fair price so in this case uh two is a best price that is uh, whiteboard pen is purchasing from azure okay so i'll be choosing this so you can see the other uh, products price total will be moves to zero because i choose uh, to purchase whiteboard pen from azure and when it comes to storage box so again purchasing storage box from azure is a better option for me if it comes to fair price Okay, so I'm choosing this okay again so you can see this two has been uh, moved to zero and for uh, acoustic block screen for me uh, it will be good to purchase from uh, again uh, from the decorating so two products actually I choose from Azure these two products I choose from Azure and one product is choose from decorating okay so you'll be able to uh, confirm this when I'm going to the purchase uh, order uh, here you can see its alternators and the uh, total has been changed based on the product purchase so here you can see from ready-made we are not purchasing anything because the price is too high so let's try to confirm this before that you can see uh, for uh, from Azure we are choosing the whiteboard pen as well as the storage box with a uh, uh, one quantity here you can see the quantity is changed to zero because we haven't chosen as uh, that is uh, acoustic block stream azure from azure okay so let's confirm this so while confirming it will ask whether the two other rfqs like other alternatives has to be keep like that itself or we want to cancel so I'll be keeping this uh, like this because I need to again purchase uh, one product from the deco. So this time I will be keeping it as alternative. So this becomes the purchase order. That is two products, uh, storage box and uh, uh, whiteboard pen I'll be purchasing from the Azure. And for the second one that is purchase order 27. Uh, here you'll be able to see this two for this two product quantity is become zero because we have chosen acoustic block screen only so when i'm confirming uh, uh, purchasing uh, acoustic block screen from vendor decorating it will again ask whether we want to keep this alternate so there is no need to keep this alternate so we can cancel this alternate view so the third one that is a uh, quotation 28 from the ready made is uh, automatically cancelled so this is how we are able to compare the RFQ lines and uh, uh, choose the best one. Okay. Now again moving back to the inventory module. So some uh, changes have been uh, uh, forwarded in the inventory module as well. That is some new features added in the operation types. Uh, that is back order creation so as we know back order has been generated uh, in order to value once we validate the transfer like if the uh, delivered quantity is uh, less than the order quantity back order is normally created and in 15 it will ask for a pop-up like whether uh, we want to create a back order or not there is a pop-up will be there so this time in 16 we'll be able to set the uh, back order whether it uh, whether it should be asked to the custom uh, sorry not to the customer to the user uh, or whether uh, it will be never created or it will be always created the back order so this kind of things will be able to set and the reception report validation uh, in the operation type and the automatic batching that is we can create batches uh, based on certain rules and all then there is an option to replenish the location in the in every location and we'll be able to configure the zip prefix uh, for shipping methods okay so let's see 
the inventory let's go back to our inventory module and here in the configuration in the operation types um, in operation type uh, let's say the received here one can decide how the back order has been generated when validating a transfer that is usually uh, when the done quantity is less than the order quantity user has to decide the about the remaining items like whether it has to transfer a uh, later period or uh, complete the transfer uh, with provided done quantity if the remaining items uh, need to transfer we have to generate a back order so currently we'll be having three options like ask always or never ask in the sense it will ask the user who are validating the transfer whether need to generate a back order or the remaining item or not so this is similar the thing in the 15 and always in the sense it will always create the back order for remaining items no need to ask every time okay and in case of never it will not ask uh, it will never create the back order or it will not ask whether we need to create a back order it will uh, it will not never uh, that is it will never create the back order for the remaining items uh, and it will only process with the provided done quantity okay so um, let's choose it as ask and uh, let's go to the purchase orders okay so from this purchase order 27 uh, let's create a duplicate okay i'll be removing this two and uh, i'll be order for 10 quantity so at the time of confirmation if i receive only uh let's say i'll be updating uh, the done quantity as five quantity which means i received only five quantity so you can see when once you are validating a pop-up will be there in order to ask whether we need to create the back order for the remaining item so if you want to create back order you can click on the uh, create back order and this is a reception report for your uh purchases that is once while, while you are purchasing a product it may be a, a purchase for different sale order okay so you can assign uh, the purchase product to different sale order or even you can unassign because sometimes uh, you may purchase this product for a particular sale order against for a particular uh, that is particular sale order and uh, maybe um, if you got a urgent one like if you got a new sale order that has to be delivered immediately you may have to unassign uh, the previous sale order that is a uh, unassign the reserved quantities of the previous sale order and you can assign it to the uh, sale order who, which has to be uh, delivered uh, in priority wise okay so for that you will be able to uh, see that reception report so you can uh, assign and unassign the purchase items to different zero here you can see different sale order so you can unassign and assign this uh, and the next configuration is when you again moving back to your inventory and uh, in the operation types uh, again i'll be choosing it as always which means um, in my case uh, like as i am purchasing uh, it will never ask for the user uh, to uh, whether we need to create a back order if the done quantity is less than the order quantity it will always create the back order without asking okay so again i'm trying to purchase okay in the purchase module so let me duplicate this order again uh, go to up actions and duplicate so there is 10 quantity has been ordered as i'm confirming the order and try to receive this product and here this time i received six on hand so i'm validating so you can see it uh, it moves to uh, directly to the done stage and the reception report is generated that is uh, 
like it has not asked any kind of back order creation or all but in the purchase order when you check you can see to receive which means one is done for your done quantity and automatically the uh, transfer for the uh, remaining four quantities will be asked generated then in the inventory uh, again as we put this to never it will never ask for the back order whatever it is the done quantity only that transfer will happen it will not create any back order so this is one another feature uh, and uh, this is a reception report so that will be taken to the operation uh, time that we have seen already and another option is the automatic batch transfer so this feature will be available if and only if we enable the batch transfer uh, from the configuration settings of the inventory module okay so how it work is that uh, we can set certain uh, options like how it should be grouped based on contact or based on the carrier or destination country or destination location etc so this four kinds we can add it over here so based on that automatically batch transfers will be created and we can define how much what is the maximum lines per batch what is the maximum transfers per batch or what is the maximum uh, weight per batch so this kind of things will be able to add and if you auto confirm your batch transfer will be automatically moved to the confirm stage otherwise it will be kept in the draft stage okay so currently for automatic batches i'll be chosen as contact so in the operations you'll be able to see the uh, transfers sorry uh, the batch transfers and here you can see currently uh, different batches will be generated so these are in the draft state so these are receipts and uh, this is for uh, a particular uh, maybe yeah for this three source document it will be the and uh, let's stay 27 so this is for deco edit okay uh, now okay so if i'm trying to create once again uh, let's do that maybe from the purchase module okay let's create a new vendor uh, from here we'll be able to create a uh, vendor so this is a new vendor okay it can be a company or individual here also certain changes have been made in order 16 here we can add the details of your vendor like the phone number the mobile number and uh, email id like um, vendor add test.com okay and when it comes to multiple addresses of your vendor here we'll be having the contact address invoice address delivery address private address other and uh, other address and there comes a new address like follow-up reports for follow-up report like follow-up address so whatever the follow-up address you have been provided all your partner follow-up reports will be sent to this follow-up address okay then uh, another thing is that under the accounting section now we'll be able to add multiple bank account for a vendor so we can add as many as a bank account number maybe uh, if your customer or your partner uh, uh, multiple bank accounts need to be added you can add maybe BE we can add that over here and maybe for another one okay and the third bank account so multiple bank accounts will be able to create so let's say this so let's try to create purchase order for this vendor and let's see how this batching will happen 
so i'm going to create uh, this new vendor a purchase order with whiteboard pen and uh, a symbol pen with a price of ten dollars and fifteen dollars okay maybe this time for quantity okay so let's confirm the order now again I'm uh, duplicating this okay if I'm having another quotation for the same vendor maybe this time it is uh, this uh, customizable desk and this dark stool and uh, with unit price of 200 and uh, uh, 60 dollars and here it's quantity is 3 and here the quantity is 6 and let's confirm so right now two transfers has been created from uh, purchase order 32 and 31 now let's see in the inventory module okay when you go to your batch transfer here you can see one more batch transfer has been generated which is in draft state and here you can see it is from the uh, same uh, source document that is, sorry uh, the different source document from the there is a different RFQs or purchase order from the same vendor so actually we are grouping the batch with contact okay so for each of them contact the batches will be generated so this is one of the a new feature that is available in Udo. Now, when it comes to inventory adjustment, okay. So, uh, in the inventory adjustment, uh, there are certain features available like uh, it added storage categories and last count date. Here, you can see in the three dots, you'll be able to add the storage category, the inventory frequency date, like the cyclic frequency days, and the last count date to this view, as well as uh, there will be an apply all button at the top of the screen as a filter for uh, apply the changes to all your products. Okay and uh, one more other feature is that uh, there is a warning icon you can see here it is a warning icon is now displayed next to the duplicate serial number that is if you have added the same product with different uh, to the same product with, diff, uh, with the same uh, serial number one is duplicated so the warning will be appear like this and here we'll be able to see the starring the start product so we'll be able to uh, filter with uh, star products as well okay so this is another uh, extended feature uh, from the uh, inventory module and uh, when it comes to in the locations there is a new option provided like in the wh stock in order to replenish if you want to replenish this location you can mm, add this replenish location and the next thing is the zip prefix that is uh, if you want to create the zip prefixes for your shipping method uh, we have to enable the delivery methods okay so for calculating the shipping method uh, there will be uh, different providers either we can calculate the shipping charge with a fixer price or based on rules or we can even make use of the different shipping providers that you can see under the shipping connector so once you enable this uh, delivery methods you will be able to compute the shipping cost and uh, there will be different shipping connectors over here like ups or dhl so let's save this so as you creating the shipping method you can make use of this provider to uh, compute the shipping cost so let's save this feature so enabling this feature install uh, the module that is respective for the ups connector or uh, the uh, dhl express connector uh, there are different uh, modules in odo apps like they are treated as separate modules like uh, a third party modules and we might require the uh, certain credentials to connect this shipping connector 
with Udo. Okay, so as we saving this and uh, when we go to the configuration and uh, uh, while we are uh, creating the shipping methods like when you go to the shipping method here you can see uh, one is uh, one delivery uh, delivery method is based on the provider uh, fixer price and the other is based on the price rule uh, like the rules uh, based on uh, either quantity weight or um, volume etc and here you can see for all this the provider is DHL okay so uh, when you yeah so let's try to configure this uh, shipping method so it is uh, let's say uh, shipping method with zip code okay so uh, you can mention the provider over here so with which provider the shipping cost is calculated currently I'll be using the fixer price so actually I'll be uh, showing the demo for how the zipper fix are uh, taken like if I'm choosing as 100 and in the destination availability will be able to add the zip prefix like this shipping method is available uh, only in the zip prefix so if i'm choosing a zip prefix of uh, 66 let's say uh, yeah here we have to add the uh, delivery maybe the delivery product it's actually a service product like you are providing a uh, delivery service to the customer and here it is let's say as 100 okay so this uh, it's availability uh, with the location uh, with the zip prefix code as 66 so you can create a different zip prefix from the configuration over here and you can use it in your shipping method so um, when you go to sales and if any of your customer uh, yeah, for any of your customer say for Azure okay uh, for this customers let's check the zip, uh, zip code okay it's actually start with 94 okay so uh, if you try to add uh, the shipping charge let's add the product and click on the add shipping and when you check the uh, shipping method or you will not be able to find the created shipping method because it's not available in the code uh, 94 okay so let's change the code maybe suppose for any of the customer having the zip, uh, zip prefix uh, 66 let's say this and if you again try to add that shipping course you will be able to see uh, the shipping method that you have been created like uh, the, the this one like the shipping cost uh, the shipping method with the zip with a cost of 100 okay so you'll be able to add and use it and the next thing is that uh, for inventory reporting like in 16 uh, they have revamped the reporting like when you go to your stock report you'll be able to identify the stock details like the product or what is the unit cost what is the total value how much is your in on your on hand what is the free to use and uh, what is incoming and what is outgoing you need so this kind of details the history like the inventory adjustment history replenishment locations forecast report so all this will be taken from the stock report and also you will be able to uh, filter uh, the things with warehouses or by category as well so as you choosing the can uh, category based on this the product will be available in the stock report now there will be location report so you, here from here you will be able to find uh, the products are available that is how many products uh, which are the products that is in different locations uh, and how many quantities are on hand and how many are reserved it's 
whether if you want the replenishment you can go with the replenishment and the history and also you will be able to take the inventory report uh, uh, for a particular time maybe if you want to identify what is the uh, product details that is a uh, stock details in wh stock uh, by february 10 so you can uh, choose it from a like inventory at the date maybe uh, it will be by 17th okay so confirm so if you have uh, products in the location in different location at that particular date you will be able to find the details then the another reporting the most history that is a stock moves and the, you can see the reference here you can see the product quantities of data which means it may be either on hand quantities of data or done the inventory adjustment okay so here you can see the uh, movement of it like uh, whether it is purchased then it is from the vendor location to stock if it is a sale it is from the stock to customer location and if it is taken for production or manufacturing it will be like uh, from the warehouse stock to production location and if it is inventory adjustment if you uh, updated the quantity to a higher amount it will be just like the virtual location inventory adjustment to stock and all so the most history will be available then the stock moves okay so here also you'll be able to uh, identify which products are moved from word to word and the, its quantity and its status and all and here you can identify the packaging as well okay once you enable that from the three dots then you will be having the validation report that is the inventory validation uh, also you will be able to take the validation at a particular maybe if you uh, want to identify the stock value uh, of your products or inventory value of your products for a particular day you can uh, choose it from here like validation at date you can choose the date over here then we'll be having the performance analysis okay so here you can see the count uh, from uh, week uh, 6 to uh, week 7 how the warehouse analysis and its count uh, that is a transfer uh, rate of uh, this man like the done deliveries uh, from february and also you'll be able to take these details into your pivot table then uh, you can add the product quantity or even you can add more uh, details from here like from which partner and all and you'll be able to add this into spreadsheet then now we'll be moving to accounting module so when it comes to accounting module there are a lot of changes made in the accounting module one is the follow-up address and uh, we'll be able to add the multiple address or sorry multiple bank accounts uh, for our partner and the follow-up address is actually used for sending the follow-up report then we'll be having the provision for creating recurrence bills uh, and uh, early payment discounts can be provided there is a difference like the computation in assets for revenue and expense so that also we'll be able to discuss uh, and uh, the sales credit limit so currently uh, in uh, 16 what we can do is that we can set a credit sales credit limit for the users so whenever they exceed that credit limit a warning will be appear so this credit limit can be uh, set as a general to all your uh, partners in the company or you can uh, set as uh, partner specific and the accounting access right uh, then uh, we'll discuss about the reconciliation and bank statement so in uh, 15 we have been created bank statement for the reconciliation so uh, but in 16 we have the possibility of either importing uh, the statement or we can fetch the uh, uh, bank statement from the uh, bank through synchronization process or if you are trying to create will be actually able to create the uh, statement lines then comes a new feature that is Storna accounting and accounting firms mode so this is one of the another accounting practice uh, where the debits and credits are recorded in the negative amounts and uh, the accounts firms mode uh, 
like this worms mode uh, usually help us to change the sequence number and uh, able, we'll be able to identify the gaps in the sequence and uh, tax included amount will be provided as well and there is a another report like journal report and um, so journal instead of journal audit in uh, order 15 uh, we'll be having a journal audit report so instead of that we'll be having a journal report and which consists of that uh, journal audit as well and uh, then comes the horizontal groups this can be used for uh, like we can we'll be able to add the different groups and we'll be able to use and filtering the data and the accounting reports accounting reports are similar to financial reports in the previous version like in the uh, order 15 will be able to customize the reports from the UI only for our balance sheet and uh, profit and loss report but in 16 will be able to add more lines and more columns to every report so through accounting reports okay now we'll be moving to accounting module let's see how this works so in the accounting module uh, so first see the uh, settings when we move to settings uh, okay we'll be having an option that is cash discount tax reduction so this will um, define when will the ca uh, tax be reduced when offering a cash discount like based on early payment or never or based on invoice so let's see first how this early payment discount will be applicable so that is from the configuration uh, in the payment terms actually you might know this payment terms are uh, used uh, to provide a certain period of time for our customers in order to um, make payment so let's take this one 15 days so actually the payment term is 15 days and uh, this will be the description on the uh, invoice and if you want to display this description you just enable this mm, checkbox and under the terms will be able to add the due type so the balance amount like the total amount has to be paid within 15 days and here you can able to see a discount and discount days so maybe we are offering 15 days for to our customer to make payment so if the customer make payment within three days itself what we can do is that we can provide one percentage of discount okay so this kind of things will be able to do because instead of doing it manually automatically this discount will be applied if they have been paid uh, the bill within three days okay so let's see uh, let's say this and uh, i'm creating an invoice so for my customer so let's uh, go to create option and here in the decor day as a customer and invoice date we have to choose okay so currently i'll be choosing the current date 24th of february and uh, here in the product line uh, i have added one product say uh, cable management box which uh, whose price is 100 dollars with a tax of 50 percentage and here i'll be providing 15 days as uh, the uh, payment term okay so let's confirm this and the invoice uh, number is 9 so as I'm going to invoice I can see it's due in 15 days as customer need to make payment uh, within this uh, 15 days any time okay suppose if customer is making payment today itself so as he is making a uh, register payment here you can see and uh, there is a message like the early payment discount is applied to your payment so the uh, customer has, uh, need to only make payment 113.85 instead of 115 actually the invoice amount is 100 plus 15 percentage tax which is 150 and uh, once a uh, one percentage of discount has been applied he has to uh, make payment only uh, 113.85 so there is a difference of 1.15 so 
whether we want to keep us open or market as fully paid so we are providing them the discount so we will be putting this market as fully paid so it will show as uh, this payment is fully paid and in the journal items as well you can see the details so this is one of the feature that early payment um, discounts can be applied next is how the follow up address is taken while sending the follow up uh, report so uh, for deco addict itself let me go to deco addicts uh, address and let me add one more address as follow up address say uh, name provider as decos follow up address and here i'll be adding uh, Uh, the address like we remove this it's 34 Barbara uh, road and the street and the uh, pleasant hill uh, so maybe I'll be using another and uh, I'll be using another city and the email ID I'll be adding over here like uh, follow up at example.com so this is a follow-up address of deco now let's try to create a follow-up address okay so before creating follow-up address we have to generate for different follow-up levels so here you can see different follow-up levels have been already created so 15 days uh, overdue uh, after 15 days of overdue first reminder will be set so you can see uh, maybe I'll be using it as uh, 5 okay let me discard this and add a follow new follow up level 4 okay after 5 days okay so that is uh, five days after the due date first email will be sent so the content template you can send out uh, set over here uh, what all actions you want to do like whether you want to send an email whether you want to send a letter as well whether you want to send an sms so you can mention the sms template over here then uh, how the uh, mails uh, or the follow-up reports will be sent whether you want to add it automatic or uh, manually so I'm using it as manually itself and uh, attach invoice which means if you have any other open invoices if you want to jo uh, join that open invoices along with this follow-up report you can enable attach invoice and if you want to add some manual activity you can add that activity maybe I just want to call the customer as well uh, and uh, uh, call the customer for payment follow -up. okay let's say so let's create an invoice for deco uh, for deco edit and I'll be providing the invoice date as um, for today um, it should be from Eight and uh, okay, the due date I have been put as sixteen, or it's been uh, for the, okay eighteen. Let's then add the products. Okay, so total you have to make 2.26 let's confirm this so the creation uh, is over here and uh, the due date is by 18th okay now let's see the uh, invoice overview for our invoice number uh, 6 you can see it is already due 6 days ago so 
if it is five days we have to send a first uh, follow-up report so in the follow-up report you'll be able to see for decorating one uh, follow-up report has been automatically generated you have previous uh, invoices as well that is the overdue is over here so let's open this so you can see the invoice number uh, 10 which is six days overdue and uh, for invoice number four it is uh, for, uh, 24 days ago it is due and this two invoices uh, is for future so it will be due after uh, 14 days only so this is a op uh, open invoices we have been joined and when we click on the follow-up the follow-up email will be sent okay so here you can see the actions which will be automatically updated for the send and print option that we uh, set in the configuration setting and the email recipient is taken as decoding that is decoding's follow up address follow up at example.com so this follow up address will be sent to this follow up address okay so this is uh, the second feature uh, then in the uh, bills will be having or in the bills as well as in the invoices will be having in field like auto post so if i'm for example i'll be going to bill and if i want to generate a recurring bill like uh, maybe if i'm providing a building uh, rent for one of my vendor so maybe my new vendor if i'm providing a bill for uh, uh, i'll be creating a bill for january 1st and uh, uh, so here it's accounting firms mode is already enabled that's why we'll be able to edit this uh, in the, the bill number let me disable that feature yeah it's yeah disabled then uh, when you try to create maybe uh, I'll be using uh, my new vendor and uh, uh, build date is chosen by February that is this month I have been uh, provided a building rent for my vendor okay so here I can add as rental amount and uh, the total amount is maybe thousand dollars okay in the other info uh, here you will be having the option auto post so here you can add uh, like it can be recursively generated that is uh, you want uh, maybe uh, it should be posted monthly till uh, December okay uh, till December 31st every month first of uh, every month uh, a recurring bill has to be generated so we can make it auto post just monthly so recurring bill can be added so if it is uh, added as a day uh, this uh, particular bill will be posted in the accounting date provided so let's confirm this so we have been uh, posted this uh, in this particular bill date now when we going to the bill you can see one more bill is automatically generated for the uh, recurrent uh, rental amount for next month of first uh, of first and you can see it uh, since it has to be posted in that particular accounting date okay we have added that uh, recurrence bill with auto post option so this will be this bill will be posted in the next month of first and for the uh, coming uh, month again a bill will be automatically created so the, in this way we can uh, create uh, bills recurringly okay and then then uh, we'll move to asset computation okay so here under the accounting will be having the asset option so as we are creating assets will be having different computation methods okay so here it is maybe uh, i'll be using um, an asset for office furnitures 
and uh, here it is the original value maybe uh, thousand and here you can add the not depreciable may value so maybe 200 is the not depreciable value so the, the remaining depreciable value will be 800 and the depreciation will be calculated based on this 800 so I'm not adding it as 200 so I'll be uh, calculating the depreciation on the uh, full amount the original value here we'll be having three asset methods uh, other, uh, either we can uh, declining uh, with a particular percentage the depreciation can be calculated or in straight line or declining through straight line and the main changes come to the computation we can either do it as a pro rata base or no pro rata base no pro rata base in the sense um, it will uh, compute that is it will not uh, consider the purchase date of the asset and the depreciation start from the start of the physical year and uh, when it comes to constant period it calculate the depreciation board from the purchase date or the pro uh, rated date as I'm uh, chosen it as a uh, constant period will be able to add the pro rated date and the third method which is based on days per period so in this third method we will compute the depreciation board per day for each period and initially it will consider the total period and uh, compute per day's depreciation and based on per day's depreciation monthly or yearly that is based on the duration frequency the, the depreciation uh, board will be computed so let me show you if it is pro rata basis and if i'm choosing the uh, uh, straight line method let's add the uh, fixed asset account and the okay expense account so let's try to compute the depreciation so you can see the depreciation board over here since it is a uh, straight line without uh, straight line every year it will be uh, declining uh, that is uh, that is the depreciation will be calculated in straight line that is equally distributed in a free year and there is no pro rata is applied so it will consider from the start of the physical year and if I'm uh, uh, make it as constant period and if I'm added the pro rata date is current date that is I purchase my furnitures uh, by today and as I'm computing the depreciation you can see the first depreciation will be calculated from today to the end of the period that is December uh, 31st of this year and uh, for uh, the other depreciation will be for the next five years so you can see from 24th of December to 31st of December the uh, depreciation will be 169.66 and all other period it will be uh, deducted uh, uh, straight line method and for the last month the remaining amount is this that is the dep remaining depreciation value that will be deducted in the last year and also when it comes to uh, based on days per period on computing the depreciation it will count the number of days in each year and uh, based on that it will be calculated so for the first year uh, it will be 170 for the depreciation and for the uh, next year it will be 200.44 and the next years and uh, the fifth, uh, sixth year as well okay so this calculation will be uh, different when it comes to the computation in the asset as well as in the deferred uh, income and uh, mm, that is deferred revenue and in deferred expense this computation period has been changed now uh, we'll move to the sales credit limit okay there is another feature that is sales credit limit so it is a maximum amount of credit available uh, for the customer uh, which is referred to as a sales credit limit so we will move to the configuration settings actually it is employed uh, to reduce the amount uh, of loss of a company i will enter if a customer refuses to pay uh, so uh, yeah under the section customer invoice will be having the sales credit limit 
द फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट एक्चुअली डिसाइड हाउ मच क्रेडिट लिमिट इज इन ओडो विल बी एबल टू से द क्रेडिट लिमिट फॉर पार्टनर एज वेल एज जनरल टू ऑल पार्टनर सो हियर विल बी एबल टू एड द क्रेडिट लिमिट एज से फाइव थाउजेंड सो also uh, for the partner as well will be able to set the for example when i'm going to the customer details here will be having one customer as joel and for this person in the accounting section will be able to add the partner limit as this 5000 is a general and maybe for this customer i may provide uh, 6000 or maybe i may provide 3000 so i can add it over here so what will happen is that as i am creating the invoice for this customer if it exceeds the partner limit sales credit limit uh for this customer joel okay uh if i'm uh say uh, this customizable does maybe uh a 10 quantity has been added so the price total amount is 7500 which is exceed his uh, credit limit of 3000 Okay, so um, it will be show uh, and uh, warning over here. So users will be able to identify uh, the amount to be um, follow. Now let's check the uh, access rights of accounting module. Okay, so go to settings and users and companies. When we go to users, we'll be able to find the user details. So there is. Uh, one user Michelle at me, uh, which is uh, Michelle admin is the internal user who have access to accounting module as an accountant. Okay, so uh, there is uh, certain hierarchy uh, like accountant, uh, bookkeeper, uh, read only billing. So each of the uh, user access has. Uh, ability to create record maybe uh, for accountant uh, he will be able to uh, edit or he is the highest he has the highest authority having full access to accounting okay now uh, when it comes to billing he has no access to dashboard accounting dashboard for billing stuff uh, it will not be able to uh, having this access to the dashboard let's try to create one maybe from the user uh let's say uh, i have a uh, book keeper okay and i'll be using the email address as uh, bk and uh, for accounting module i'll be adding this person as book keeper Okay, and from the actions, I'll be changing the password as BK one two. Okay, now let's try to log in as this person. Okay, so I'm log out from Michelle and log in as a bookkeeper, and the password has been added and log in. so he is a bookkeeper and to accounting module when he go to the accounting module you can see he has access to the accounting dashboard and he will be able to create edit and post record but he has not access to log date or configuration settings of accounting he will be access to reporting side only and to reconciliation not able to create the log dates and uh, also he will be able to create invoices uh, and uh, he'll be able to create invoices and even he can to edit the invoices and post invoices and all and uh, when it comes to customers details you can see he'll be able to create the customer but uh, 
similarly uh, when you go to the uh, uh, let's say the customer inventor and the products but he have no permission to uh, edit and uh, the details so th this will be the other option uh, like let's log out this and uh, let's keep as our admin and uh, login let's create and read only user as well so each of the user has different access right so when it comes to building stuff he have not uh, no access to dashboard uh, he can create and uh, edit and post invoices and bills but not able to edit uh, the product details customer details but he can create and he only he have only limited access to the reporting uh, tab now let's again go to the user section okay so if we keep this person as uh, read only user he will have access to the view uh, view that is the details of the dashboard and only permission to create invoices bills in the draft stage only but will not be able to post because he's a read only user and will not be able to edit the documents like products but he can create and view the asset details the default revenue details and see the reports but he has no uh, permission to edit the documents now uh, we have one more feature in the accounting module when it comes to configuration settings we'll be having the store no accounting so store no accounting and accounting firms mode so store no accounting uh, is uh, one of the commonly used uh, uh, accounting practice uh, or business practice in the eastern european country and uh, what they are using uh, why they are using is that they consider store no accounting is the best practice to reverse the journal entry with a negative debit or credit which will not create redundant figures in the accounting system so let me show you before enabling this so when you go to your invoices yeah in this invoice you can see in the journal item initially the income account is credited and the uh, receivable account is debited and once we create a credit note this like we, when we are reversing this journal entry what will happen is that the account receivable is credited and the product sale is debited that is a reverse journal entry a reverse journal entry with a opposite debit and credit will be added now if i'm trying to uh, set the store no accounting so let's see how this effect and one more option is that the accounting firms mode so this option uh, will help uh, in different uh, for different purpose like will be able to uh, uh, identify the gaps in the sequence and will be able to edit the uh, document uh, sequence so we can add the quick encoding like uh, whether we want to edit the sequence of custom invoice or vendor bill or both so i'll be using both and a new field like total tax included uh, amount will be uh, added and uh, the customer uh, invoice vendor bill date will be suggested automatically so let's save this okay so once we say this let's try to create an invoice and uh, okay i'm going to invoice and i'm trying to create an invoice so here you can see this invoice number is right now it is editable and there is a field of tax included amount so let's first discuss about the store no accounting so when i'm creating a whiteboard pen uh, that is an invoice for whiteboard pen here you can see in the journal item that is account receivable is debited and the product sale is credited okay so in uh, store no accounting let's add the customer uh, once you are creating the reverse journal entry what will happen is that 
this instead of uh, in the normal accounting for the reverse journal entry uh, the product sales will be debited and uh, account receivable is credited but in store no accounting what will happen is that the product sales will be credited with a negative value and the receivable uh, will be debited itself with a negative value okay so let's create a credit note and add the reverse entry and here you can see uh, yeah the product sale is negative credit and the receivable is negative debit so uh, this will uh, reduce the redundant figures in the accounting and usually uh, this kind of entries will be recorded in the red color in the reporting so this is also known as uh, uh, let's say uh, the red accounting as well so maybe if you go to general ledger you can see some journal entries like when you go to your uh, receivers you can see that reversal data will be counted in the negative amount now let's see the changes in the uh, yeah for uh, invoice let's duplicate with this uh, accounting firms mode okay so automatically the next invoice number is 12 so i'll be adding it as maybe i need that is i may edit it as 15 okay so this kind of uh, addition is possible that is you'll be able to change the sequence number and uh, let's save okay so you'll be able to see uh, let's let's go to the invoice okay it should be in the red color which means uh, a sequence is not in order there is a gap in the order so again i'm creating let's create so this time you can see the invoice date is automatically suggested with the counting firms mode and maybe if i'm uh, i'm uh, adding uh, some service item and the price will be added as a uh, thousand so when i'm adding this uh, line you can see uh, the, this is a tax included amount so automatically the price and tax will be splitted and the product is updated so you can add the uh, maybe this is for uh, uh, like a warranty payment okay like a, a service level payment you can directly add without adding the uh, product so for if you added a, uh, add a product here now the product price will be updated so instead of that we can if you uh, then if you are receiving a payment from the uh, customer uh, with the tax included price you can mention that so based on that uh, that is uh, with the default tax is 15 percentage is uh, recorded in the counting configuration so it will be automatically taken that the actual price and the tax included price and tax and the total amount over here and i'll be changing this to the 18 okay that is a sequence number has been changed to 18 and posted the invoice so so there is a price difference of 0.01 so let's update that So again you can see which is in or uh, not in order 15 then comes 18 in the accounting dashboard you can see the gaps so wherever in which journal this uh, sequence gaps are there it will be visible in the accounting dashboard and when you click on that you can see the, all the vendors and if you want to resequence it you can just enable this and uh, go to actions and then resequence so this is the first sequence number and you can see the before sequence number and after sequence number so 15 and 18 will be replaced by 20 and 30 okay all other remains the same and you can confirm so the sequence number will be corrected now in the counting dashboard when you uh, that is uh, when you yeah it will be removed when you refresh the uh, database okay it will be automatically uh, removed once this gap is filled now 
uh, we'll move to the reconciliation process so how this reconciliation uh, in the sense in the previous versions from the accounting dashboard we'll be having the option to create the statement currently we'll be having to fetch the online synchronization and import uh, record option so what we can do is that maybe uh, for this invoice say this uh, one that is for decoding 13 okay I'm registering the payment okay uh, so its status become in payment now from the dashboard accounting dashboard what I can do is that when I'm clicking on the reconcile items and from here will be creating the uh, statement lines actually okay so here I'll be adding the um, uh, label and uh, deco label in the sense I'll be using it with uh, the invoice number itself and the amount as well like thousand point zero one and let's say okay so you'll be able to uh, see this over here and uh, you can choose it uh, over here so this is a uh, existing matching line for that particular payment you can see it over here and then you can validate so this actually in 16 we are uh, creating the statement lines not the statement so once you are validated uh, it will be reconciled and the invoice status will be moved from in payment to paid okay now there comes the analytic accounting so uh, in the configuration settings we have to enable the analytic accounting okay so in the configuration setting here it is a analytic accounting this analytic accounting is used to uh, track the cost and revenue by uh, projects or departments that is by different dimensions so uh, that is it's a feature that allows users to track our financial data at more detail level like by creating more dimensions like this kind of department projects or internal expense etc so once you enable this feature you'll be able to get a section like analytic account containing analytic distribution models uh, accounts and plans so plans are similar like to groups or uh, it can be uh, and department project or internal like that so uh, let's add this department here you can see the department uh, there is an analytic plan and uh, maybe here in the sense maybe like I'll be using as internal expenses this is one of my plan and here uh, we can add the default applicability whether it can be optional mandatory or um, unavailable and also uh, we can add this applicability on different domains that is whether a plan or uh, an analytic distribution has been applied mandatory on a bill or on an invoice or a miscellaneous journal entry or on the purchase order or on the sale order this we can set out here so if it is an invoice we can also mention the applicability whether it is mandatory whether we need to mandatory it is mandatory add to add this uh, analytic distribution so this kind of things will be able to set so I'm not adding this so uh, let's say and also we'll be able to create sub plans so when we go to sub plan we can add more sub plans whose parent is uh, internal expense that is a plan we have been created so firstly we have been created a plan so in this uh, plan we can see the sub plans over here and the analytic accounts come under this so what I'm doing is that I'll be creating analytic accounts uh, from here maybe this is uh like employee expense and uh, its plan is for uh, uh internal expense also you can mention the reference and customer if required over here so i'm not providing this okay that is from the uh, analytic plan itself will be able to create analytic account from the smart app also when i'm going to 
uh, analytic accounts i'll be able to see all the analytic account uh, by plans and i can group it by uh, plans over here so let's apply so you can see for internal expense there is one analytic account which is um, our employee expense then i'll be creating from here one like uh, marketing expense and it's come under internal expenses let's save this and i'll be creating one more like uh, project expense and this is also con contained under the internal expense and maybe also one more like total expense that's come under the internal expense plan okay so currently we'll be having a uh, four more and let you accounts under the similar plan now we can set certain distribution model like uh, it is actually a kind of rule how this analytic accounts are affected so uh, what you can do is that here uh, if I'm uh, billing or if I'm creating a document for a particular person let's say uh, Azure uh, let's take our new vendor okay so the expense generator should be distributed among different uh, uh, analytic accounts so what i can do is that under the internal expense plan i can define the uh, expense that is total expense should be recorded in the total expense like as 100 percentage itself and maybe employee expense will be uh, say it may be 20 percentage and when it comes to the uh, marketing expense maybe 40 percentage and uh, the project expense is remaining again 40 expense so when an expense is generated and uh, that expense is distributed among this analytic account i'll be able to find what is the total expense uh, recorded and how much it for the uh, and let uh, employee expense how much it is for the marketing expense so i'll be able to distribute this entire expense under the different analytic group okay so let's create one like this and i'm trying to create a bill okay i'm trying to create a bill for my new vendor and uh, i'll be adding uh, okay uh, i'm not adding the product instead of that i'll be adding the expense as uh, thousand and uh, once i click on that over here you can see that amount thousand will be added over here with this analytic distribution total with 100 percentage okay so once i've confirmed this so this amount will be distributed this amount will be uh, distributed and uh, we can see it in this analytic account so let's go to our analytic accounts and i'll be again filtering it by plans and under the internal over here you can see uh, the total expense is thousand and project expense 400 again market expense is 400 and employee expense is 400 so we'll be able to track uh, financial data in more in a more detailed way like this also you will be able to create uh, more analytic distribution uh, on the flow itself so as i'm creating uh, let's say as i'm creating uh, one expense so the analytic distribution i can create from here maybe a uh, hundred percentage to this one or um, again uh, 20 40 percentage to this and even i can save this from here so once i save this distribution from here i'll be able to see this distribution maybe on the flow itself we may need to create some distribution model so that will be saved over here once you save this from your bills or from your invoice that will be maybe let's go with 
and this one. I think it's not safe. So let's create again for a new vendor and uh, I'll be adding okay uh, with a $300 price so basically this is a previous one we have been applied what I can do is that I can just remove this one so the total expense let's see in the and in the department wise maybe internal uh, it is 100 and maybe for uh, administrative commercial or marketing it will be 40 percentage and let's save this okay so analytic distribution template say uh, saving model has been applied and let's save and close okay so this uh, save analytic distribution will be seen in the uh, distribution model so when you see it will be appear over here and you can use this distribution uh, model as well in future okay so uh, this are all the uh, few features and uh, next comes to the journal audit so in the journal audit which means you will be able to find the all the uh, journal entries or the that is uh, the report that can be taken based on the journal so in the customer invoice you'll be able to see all the customer invoices and its accounts affected the journal invoice number the date debit uh, amount and the tax amount. and at the bottom of it you will be able to find the audit report like the taxes applied when it comes to sales and vendor bill you will be able to see that okay the tax audit and also uh, the next thing is a horizontal report like in the configuration setting you will be able to see the horizontal report where you can add the horizontal uh, you know, say currency okay uh, in which all uh, report this horizontal groups will be available you can uh, add it over here maybe in the profit and loss report and you can also add the field name over here uh, let's say uh, currency and save okay so when you create a uh, uh, say this horizontal group for profit and loss report in the reporting profit and loss report you will be having that uh, filter with horizontal group so as you click on the currency you will be able to see the uh, balances based on the currency like usd and uh, euro so this kind of um, usage will be there it can be created based on the partner or journal entry and a lot of functions are there and next comes the accounting reports for accounting reports this is basically for customizing your reports that is you can add uh, more columns and more uh, lines uh, to your report so for in case of aged payable if i'm trying to add one more column i can click on the create add a line option and new columns can be created or new lines can be created when it comes to under the options there will be different options or filters like based on account types the journals uh, and reconcile entry so as i'm enabling this feature this filters are available in the aged report okay so as i'm saving let's go to aged payable report so i'll be able to get the uh, this is by based on the uh, account like uh, the account and the partner the other options uh, shown the unreconciled entries as well etc okay so using the uh, uh, accounting reports users will be able to customize the financial statements to formulate new lines by setting rules and formulate uh, to an extent okay now let's move to the point of sale in the point of sale it will be there will be structural change for the post configuration promotions coupons gift cards loyalty programs will be applicable margins and costs will be able to identify and also it will be uh, provide some qr code on the ticket okay so in the point of sale module as you see in the configuration settings uh, from here we are creating the uh, that is point of sale okay 
so let's try to create a new one so as i'm creating one with uh, like restaurant and we can mention it is a restaurant let's say so uh, there will be a second post will be generated and its configuration can be managed from the configuration settings Okay, from here actually we are changing the configuration like shop when we choose the shop the configuration under this will be the configuration or the functionality applicable to your shop and if I'm changing it to restaurant uh, this features whatever the feature we have been changed under this will be applicable to your restaurant and when it comes to shop and uh, here one more feature is the margin and cost so it will show the mar uh, margin and cost in the product information and another thing is the uh, uh, coupons promotion this kind of thing which is similar in the uh, sales mode that can be applicable to pose as well and also there will be option to generate uh, QR code on the um, yeah on the ticket so use which means on the bill so users will be able to easily um, make the payment from uh, by scanning that QR code okay so let's say and all other features are similar this uh, small changes have been applied so let me open the new session and uh, Okay, here uh, opening uh, control uh, is zero because uh, opening balance is zero because I'm starting as a presser. Yeah, here you can see the enter code option. So using enter code option, we can add the coupon codes and discount codes uh, or uh, etc. And e wallets can be uh, added from here to your product that is while you are uh, making sale uh, in the post and let, i am trying to add this product so here you can see the product info where you can find the margin like the financial details the cost of the product and the price and the margin you have received so this kind of details you will be able to see from the product info that is margin analysis will be there so as I'm choosing one of the my customer, you can see there is a loyalty point applied as we have created the loyalty points. And uh, since uh, reward is uh, applicable, that is reward is uh, you can add the reward by clicking on the re because reward is activated right now because this person have the loyalty point. So you can see the reward has been added over here. And maybe if you have uh, uh, any um, gift card or discount coupon you can add the discount coupon from here and also you can apply the e ballot uh, options uh, that is if you have any e ballot you can uh, apply that uh, point to your sale now as i'm uh, adding uh, the payment method and validating so here you can see in the receipt or as well as in the invoice you'll be having this qr code on your ticket so which will enable the users to make payment by uh, scanning the qr code then uh, let's close the session 35.46 is a uh, balance that is a closing balance now we'll move to the manufacturing and pla so when it comes to production uh, management uh, there are some uh, extra features that comes under the work center which is very interesting that is uh, 
still 15 will be able to add only a responsible person for our manufacturing so this time uh, when a work order is scheduled will be able to assign this operation to individual person that is we can uh, add employees who is working in that particular work center and cost of employee also can be added and also when it comes to the capacity like uh, how much quantity of products that the work center can uh, produce in the uh, that in that work center we can produce uh, parallelly uh, it can be a general one maybe for a specific product the capacity uh, that is product manufacturing capacity may be varied so that can be added as a specific capacity and the next thing is the work order dependency which means uh, uh, the order of your uh, work order can be identified then uh, comes the allocation report or manufacturing order similar to the allocation report in the purchase module we'll be having allocation report in the manufacturing order as well and also will be having the ability to merge and split our manufacturing order also it will be possible to uh, suggest uh, new methods or uh, if we found uh, the production is uh, Okay, uh, the production can be speed up with certain operation or uh, by suggesting any method will be able to suggest that is users who are working in their work center will be able to suggest so uh, based on that uh, ECO request that is engineering order uh, this engine change order request can be created from the manufacturing order itself and maybe later who are uh, responsible for uh, managing that ECOs he can either uh, refuse or accept that okay now let's move to the manufacturing module okay so in the configuration settings here we'll be having the option of work order dependency so you can see the description that set the order that the work order should be processed in maybe if you have three work orders in which order they have to be uh, work so that can be defined in the work order dependency and also uh, it activate uh, this feature within the bombs miscellaneous tab as well that is in the BOMs miscellaneous tab as well and here it will be the allocation report for our manufacturing order so once we enable this we can say so this features will be available now let's uh, move to bill of material so here you can see a bill of material for dust combination okay so here uh, the product is dust combination and uh, one quantity of uh, that is one in order to produce one quantity of dust combination i might require this product that is a drawer black maybe uh, some other items like screws and balls etc okay so in the operation you can add multiple operation so first operation which will be working in the assembly line one work center and uh, for the second operation there will be a second operation uh, which will be also in the assembly line one and uh, maybe in the operation third operation okay so there are three operation which should be work in the assembly line so we need to set the uh, uh, order uh, it should be processed so in the miscellaneous tab you will be having this operation dependency let's say this uh, that is let's enable this operation dependency and say so once you say this uh, here in the three dots you'll be having this option to add the block by that is inside this work center will be having that's inside this operation will be having the option to add the block by uh, option so the first operation is blocked by the second operation so you can mention operation one is blocked by the second operation which means second operation need to be uh, performed first then it needs to be go to operation one okay then for the 
second operation i have been added the third operation have to be blocked okay that is third operation is blocked second operation which means third has to be work first then second has to be work then only the first will be work okay so in this way we can add the uh, block by option and when we go to the work center you can see in the drill station okay under the drill station here we can add the capacity okay how much product or how much quantity we can produce parallelly and also when it comes to specific product here we can add maybe if whiteboard pen is producing in this particular uh, drill station i can generate uh, 10 uh, sorry 15 quantities at a time or maybe another product like symbol pen is uh, manufacturing in this uh, warehouse i can produce uh, 10 items 10 quantities parallel so you can mention it over the specific capacity over here and here you will be having the option of requires login which means employee uh, that is the employees need to login to this particular uh, work center then they will be able to uh, add uh, they will be uh, login and they will be able to perform their operation then here the co under the costing information cost per hour per worker and per employee you can set up so these are the extra things that will be come over here now let me move to our assembly line one here i'm adding the requires login to uh, let's say to mark demo and uh, maybe to illy lampard okay and the employee per cost is provided as okay cost per hour per employee is 10 okay let's save this now in order to log in they require some login credential like a login number so that will be recorded from the employees in the employee module maybe for demo yeah under the hr settings will be able to add the pin code over here so then this pin code is now used for marking attendance the point of sale and doing the work operation in the there is a work order operation in the manufacturing so for demo i'll be choosing it as pin code as 1111 and uh, for any lampard i'll be providing it as uh two 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 okay now uh in the manufacturing module let's try to create a manufacturing order for our desk combination okay uh let's uh check whether any manufacturing order is there for now okay so let's create a desk combination i'll be creating one unit of desk combination so you can see the products and uh, the work orders and the miscellaneous data will be updated let's confirm and uh, plan this okay so in the work order you'll be able to see the third operation is about to ready because the second will be uh, able to uh, start uh, once the third one is completed okay and when you go to planning by work center here you will be able to see that in the assembly line one we have uh, added three work orders okay so uh, this three work orders you can see the uh, how this should be work so the third operation should be work first then comes the second one then comes the first one so this is a dependency so work order dependency that shown in the uh, gyan chart in uh, with arrow representation okay so let's moving to the okay 
so here in the work order let's try to start this work order so you'll be able to this work order in the overview as well here when you go to assembly line you can see one work order that is operation 3 for desk combination is about to ready when you click on that uh, it will ask the employee to log in so if mark uh, demo is logging he will be able to logged in and uh, you can see it is uh, running and uh, you can see the timer from here he'll be able to uh, block uh, if any uh, equipments are filled he can block the production and uh, raise a manufacturing request or he can scrap the, some product if any of the components is damaged or even he can add more components if he required and also he'll be, if, if we required he'll be able to add a byproduct maybe one byproduct of uh, simple pen is generated so he can add the byproduct and here from here maintenance request can be added and this is another feature that is a new feature which will connect the manufacturing order and our ECO that is our PLM module so what we can do is that he can that is whoever is uh, performing this uh, work like mark demo is running this work order operation so if he found something uh, better like if he want to speed up the production he can suggest some steps or if he found some step to slow down the production or it affect the quality of the product he can suggest uh, uh, the work or worksheet improvement so he can update or add step when we click on the add step he can add uh, like uh, uh, operation 3 is slows down the production okay he can add and he can add more instruction like uh, we should we should uh, only required uh, operation 1 and operation 2 so if you want to remove this third operation uh, he can add the title and instructions can be added here we will be able to add more comments and more structures can be used to add your instructions over here maybe also you'll be able to add articles images or links and all and uh, even upload the documents and click on the proposed change so this will create an uh, ECO uh, order in the PLM module okay next he can update the instructions here uh, he can add the new instruction like new instruction and he can also add the comment over here and click on the proposed change okay then uh, if he want to delete any step he can choose this or set a set a new picture uh, this will be available and maybe if i'm going to then i'll be adding maybe one document proposed change. so the, in this way we can add more steps or even if you want to delete step or suggestions so this kind of things will be able to add now uh, if you want to continue the production you can continue or you can validate okay then uh, going to the next and mark has done okay so uh, now you can see the uh, operation has been completed now uh, the second operation has been uh, waiting for components and when you go to the operation in the manufacturing order you can see this is in progress stage and in the work order uh, it is finished now you can start this once this is completed uh, you can uh, stop the process okay let's start uh, the process and stop and uh, once it is completed uh, you can complete maybe again by demo itself and uh, this time i'll be mark as done and the uh, first operation as well i'll be keeping this as mark as done okay so all the uh, manufacturing has been completed now its stage is about to close 
okay so as i click on mark as done it will be moved to the done and here you will be able to get the allocation rip uh, report that is if you are uh, generated this manufacturing order from a sale order maybe if customers are asking, asking for some uh, uh, product and you are manufacturing that you can see that source document over here and it will be assigned to that so the MRP reception reports will be available and uh, now when you go to your PLM module you can see that PLM request will be the okay you can see one engineering order change from operation 3 will be updated over here okay so uh, you can see the operation uh, exceptions and all uh, the product has uh, so effectivity so uh, that is uh, the changes effectiveness is based on at a particular date or as soon as possible so we can add those things over here and uh, this type uh, that is operation changes whether the approvals required basically the approvals are set in the ECO stages okay so in the next stage in the in progress will be moving to in progress and in the revision maybe I'll be removing this third step I'll be archiving this and uh, coming back to over here and once it is validated I'll be apply the changes okay so it will be moving to effective stage so uh, when you go to your BOM of your uh, desk combination you can see uh, in the operation the third operation has been removed and its version is updated okay so in this way we will be able to find uh, that is we will be able to uh, manage the manufacturing and PLM and also uh, the same desk combination in the manufacturing bomb you can see that uh, one operation is removed and its version is updated to and another feature is merging of the manufacturing order maybe uh, two manufacturing has order has been the okay like for our desk combination uh, maybe I'll be uh, first I have an uh, manufacturing order okay of two unit and I'll be having another manufacturing order of like uh, the desk combination itself this is for five quantity okay so basically for desk combination there are uh, two uh, manufacturing order which is interesting so what i can do is that i can merge this two so it's uh, order number is nine and ten from the action you will be having this option to merge so once you merge this you can see 11 is generated that is a new manufacturing order 11 is generated with a 7 quantity okay so you can see it source is uh, over here 9 and 10 maybe if you found like as you uh, checking uh, your uh, components if you found that uh, maybe you have only uh, components uh, to generate five quantities only or six quantities only so maybe you want to again split this okay so i can choose this and i can split this uh, and uh, split to how much uh, manufacturing order maybe i want to split into two so you, you have to add the schedule date maybe currently i'll be having uh, uh, the components to produce uh, sorry uh, the product to produce that is quantity to produce uh, five or six okay so this time I can manufacture six quantity of test competition by today and uh, I may receive uh, the remaining bill of materials by 28th of uh, February so I just need to manufacture the remaining one at that time so I can add the schedule date and the quantity to produce once I click on the split you can see again it will be splitted 
so this is again another feature that is merging and splitting your uh, manufacturing order now we'll be having the website module where the website designs and customizing the pages are uh, more extended and the uh, payments and check when it comes to payments and checkout process currently apple pay and google pay are integrated so we'll be able to use those methods to make payment and we'll be having an option to reorder from portal that is if customer has already uh, paid or purchase from the website you will be able to reorder the same product from his portal he, uh, he don't need to come to your website and again search for the product you know he can just uh, reorder that and the product price comparison and also will be able to uh, restrict the sale of zero priced product okay then the on-site payments and picking sometimes customer can make payment through online and they can pick the products from the nearest store and another thing is that plausible analytics so it's an alternative for uh, google analytics and when it comes to live chat module uh, a chatbot configuration is there so uh, in the previous version will not have this chatbot so chatbot will collect the basic information and uh, at some point chatbot can uh, uh, he can uh, redirect the conversation to the respective operator okay so we we'll move to website okay so in the website module uh, here also in the configuration settings if you have multiple uh, website uh, you will be having the configuration just as uh, the same configuration of the point of sale that is whatever the configuration we have added under uh, this uh, website will be the settings of my website and if you have changed the website my website too and uh, change the settings over here that will be the settings of my website too okay so this uh, structuring will be different and here you can see uh, that is it support more uh, most payment methods like visa mastercard maestro and uh, google pay apple pay etc for uh, making payments and uh, here the other options like add to cart so as we are adding the product to add to cart it will decide whether no, that is this settings will decide whether it should be stay on the page or it should go to the cart or let the user decide with a dialog box and uh, the next thing is sign up so uh, currently we will be having three options that is optional uh, displayed and uh, mandatory so optional uh, allows guests to register from their order confirmation email to track their order if we deserveable this as a deserveable they can buy as yes, i guess the, uh, they need not uh, be logging to odo uh, or uh, logging to the portal for uh, check out the process if it is mandatory uh, the users uh, must uh, log in to a website uh, in order to check out and uh, this is another option that is reorder from portal that is allow our customers to add products from the previous order so uh, let's say okay so let me add uh, this checkout process to mandatory so which means the guest should be checkout must okay that is checkout uh, that is login uh, should be mandatory in order to check out okay let's say and uh, And I'm logging out from here and currently I don't have an account so I'll be uh, trying to create a new account 
from here so let's add as john doe and the email is added at john at example dot com and the sorry email is over here and the name and the password is updated and it is also confirmed okay then sign up okay so this time if the person doesn't have any login they can log in to over here and, and go to shop page and purchase the product so customizable deskers i'm purchasing customizable scan so click on the buy now option since this person is login he can add the uh, details like bed number and uh, street street details and uh, uh, street two and uh, city details as okay i'll be adding some arbitrary points over here and uh, let's go to next so this time uh, you have to uh, confirm the address and all and he'll be able to add the uh, payment method from here maybe uh, the uh, with demo and uh, free charges and here he can add the uh, payment details and if you want to save the payment for future use uh, it can be enabled and click on the pay now option which means this product is purchased by this customer he has already logged in which means he is a portal customer right now and when he go to his uh, account uh, like his my account he'll be able to see his sale order and invoice from here which is already paid okay this is the invoice detail and which is already paid now uh, let's go back to the sale order okay this is a sale order and uh, he can from uh, reorder the same product by clicking on the reorder again so this user is able to click on sorry i have an issue with that so what it will happen is that again an order will be created for the same product for this customer so reorder again option will be the which allows uh, the customer to reorder the same product now let's log out and suppose a public this time uh, the user has been logging now uh, uh, suppose a public user come to the shop and uh, they choose in one of the product chair flow protection and he's trying to click on the buy now option so it will lead him to uh, login because we have added the login as a mandatory one okay so add to cart if he added this to cart so you can see the product uh, view the cart items so the product is added and he will not be able to check out uh, other he has to log in and then only he will be able to check out so let's log in now when you go to the configuration settings okay we have many more features like uh, that is preventing the zero uh, that is a zero priced product so instead of that it will be redirect to contact us page okay and also there is a uh, product comparison which gives a uh, strike through in the uh, website form then yeah one of the other method is 
shipping method like customers will be having the ability to make payment through online and uh, pick the product from the shop so you can add the on-site payment and picking so picking sites can be added over here and when it comes to shipping methods uh, okay you can see one shipping method is over here like uh, my shop okay so and when you choose a payment providers you can see one provider which is pay in store when picking the product so this is also another option like a customer can pay in the store when picking so let's see the features and okay go to the home page before that let's go to the product and uh, uh, let's take this customizable desk okay so here you can see the product configuration you can directly go to the product details and suppose i'll be added uh, its price as zero or maybe it's let's add it as 750 itself and uh, um, okay let's go to some other products let's take uh, HF flow protection and edit the product details where you can find the comparison price so i can add the comparison price over here as 13 so this price will be uh, the com uh, comparison price which will be added as a strike through then let's see how to see in the website so i'm going to website so here you can see that uh, comparison prices uh, like this 13 which is a strike through price and uh, this is the actual amount and if i'm trying to uh, add this price as zero it will actually prevent the sales of this product instead of that it will be uh, sent to a contact as well so add to cart button will be uh, disable from here and uh, contact speech will be updated over here so customers need to contact the company directly for that customizable product and all okay so this is one of the other option again uh, i'm trying to add this price as 12 itself okay again going to website and let's add uh, some additional products that is in the sales here suppose I'll be adding some uh, alternative products and uh, maybe some accessory products and optional products I'll be choosing some arbitrary products over here Okay. so in your product page you will be able to add those products so for that one snippet is the uh, you can go to edit and customize each of your page that is from the edit option you will be able to see the snippets over here okay so for this one uh, what you can add is that uh, maybe yeah this is for alternative products so all the alternative products will be added over here and maybe uh, if i'm adding the items over here
for the snippet i'll be able to add the details like how it should be uh, available in uh, in the theme and all so here yeah uh, it's layout grid la uh, layout auto conditions etc then also you'll be able to add more products for the topmost one topmost snippet here you'll be able to add the rating as well so as you add the rating rating will be applied the tax indication can be enabled so along with this uh, price the tax indication will be appear and uh, its shape hover and how the additional products will be available uh, these things the tax indication whether we want to add a wish list so wish list and buy now is auto already uh, added so here you can see let's say that so the rating and the tax indication so this is a tax indication and the rating have been added and uh, specification will be under the bottom of page and uh, the image width layout should be as grid or carousel and uh, the thumbnails uh, where it should be available and if you have extra images added how it should be appear so this kind of customization will be able to uh, do when you click on the edit option and each page will be having this customized features as well okay now the next thing is as i'm adding this to cart and uh, so it will ask whether uh, we need to continue shopping or proceed to checkout so as i'm going to proceed to checkout click on the process checkout option so here it will be asking the delivery method uh, and the pay with so I'm paying in online and uh, uh, I need to pick this from my shop or I can pick this from my shop uh, from the shop and pay in the uh, like pay in the uh, shop itself that is in the picking site itself so let me uh, do the online payment okay and uh, let's click on the pay now option so you can see a sale order will be created in the back end as you confirm with the payment if it is chosen uh, uh, picking uh, from the shop and pay, uh, making payment in the uh, in the shop itself it will be actually create a say, uh, quotation okay so the you can see the sale order number is 69 in the orders e-commerce order you will be able to see the order which is uh, already invoiced and here you can see the uh, picking is on-site picking and a delivery is also created which is not validated so whenever the com a customer come to uh, pick the product from the uh, picking side I can validate this so these are the few uh, details from the website and when it comes to chat live chat we'll be having the possibility to create the chat board that is from the configuration we'll be having the chat board so we can create welcome board and lead generation board based on our purpose so for welcome board it will ask certain script can be added so this script will be appear in the chat board and based on the answer the further process will be taken like it will ask uh, it will welcome the person then it will ask what are you looking for and there will be three answers so based on this answer the next step will be taken so if he if the a public user click on i have a pricing question it will uh, again uh, add this uh, show this particular uh, 
script and it will be then forwarded to operator so when it comes to forwarding to operator uh, actually the chat code will redirect the conversation to the operator who is in online and has a lesser number of chats in the last 30 minutes okay then uh, you can test this from here like you can see a chat board like this a chat script will be appear so as i'm clicking on the answer it will uh, further show the scripts okay now now let's move to our hr module so little configurations like um, in the hr module um, when you come to the recruitment there is some uh, features like in the configuration settings we'll be having the option to display the cv in the application form as well as well as cv digitization process is available with ocr so as an application uh, applicant has come to uh, apply on the job position uh, for example there is one to record one application as the so as they upload the uh, document uh, that document will be appear over here for example uh, when i'm going to recruitment of this one one to recruit and uh, uh, let's okay this is published okay for experienced developer this is published uh, so let me go to the job page and if uh, any user from the job page added the details over here let's say uh, alex and uh, his uh, mail id and phone number the linkedin profile and from here the details can be chosen okay so if this uh, maybe i'll be uh, adding uh, any one of the document over here okay and let's add this um, let's choose another file okay let's cancel this and uh, okay let me print this quotation and uh, use this uh, document like order 54 as a recruitment okay for example uh, if any applicant come to this job and when he click on the apply now option and he add the details and uh, and he chosen the file okay then open and you click on the i'm feeling lucky and so in the back end in the job positions one more application will be appear for alex uh yeah this one and here you will be able to see uh, the cv uploader cv will be available and it can be also digitized if you have a physical cv in your hand so this is one from recruitment module and the recruitment reporting you'll be having large number of repo uh, reporting like recruitment analysis source analysis uh, time in stage analysis so this is an interesting one where you can uh, able to identify the uh, different uh, cvs that uh, number of days it will be in particular stages so this kind of things and your team performance will be able to identify that is how much um, uh, applicants are hired uh, for from your team like um, from um, based on each user like how much are hired by demo and how much is hired by uh, michelle and me so this kind of team performance will be able to get then in the employee module okay when you try to create an 
uh, employee document will be having one more feature that is part time that is employees can be added as part time for new employees if it is a uh, part time employee we can mention the part time employee and uh, here the uh, standard working hour of our uh, a part time employee can be updated so based on that the salary computation and all and the contract can be created that is it is just like this employees whether a permanent one or a part-time employee based on that those things will be able to add then comes to uh, let's disable then comes to the attendance module in the attendance configuration the check-in and check-out process is uh, defined uh, by a barcode or RFID uh, process or through uh, through barcode source that is uh, using the friend cam uh, the barcode can be able to scan and it will display the greeting message in 10 seconds only and uh, when it comes to time off and payroll there is two interesting features and uh, okay users will be able to uh, delete the approved uh, time off that is one of the feature available so you can see these are the approved uh, uh, say uh, the approved uh, leaves so when you click on that and see the details and uh, uh, we can see the details which is maybe uh, let's let's create a new time off for march okay and the description and all can be added so for march 2nd a leave is applied and uh, you can see the approvals over here for Michelle and even it is approved okay the second approval is required so it is validated so in the uh, dashboard you will be able to see that confirm leave over here and uh, when you click on this there will be a delete option which means the user will be even able to delete the approved time off and here you can at the reason for cancellation of your approved time off before confirming so you can add the reason over here like uh, i'm adding a reason uh, like not required time off and time off can be deleted and also uh, there is one feature like stress days so where we can add the stress days let's say here one stress day is added for the period of 2023 that is by uh, 20 to 28 of february it will be considered as um, stress days so during this period employees cannot ask for leave so and it is also linked with the department so uh, the employees from this uh, department will not be able to take uh, or will not be permitted to take leaves in this particular days so this uh, stress days will be uh, shown in red color like this from 15 to 31 like this in the uh, uh, calendar now we'll be having Uh, some features in the email marketing where uh, we will be creating some uh, emails and there is a feature of uh, like AOB test so that is AOB test and while we enable this we will be able to add uh, the winner selection and uh, the alternative version so it's actually a different uh, version of an email will be created to see how the small changes can impact your result so if i'm uh, creating uh, the mail to a mailing list and to a particular mailing list let, let's say to newsletter and i have been added one uh, mail body over here 
and here I'll be added the uh, allow uh, AOB testing as 10 percentage so what will happen is that it will choose a subset of contact list for 10 percentage of your recipient and send uh, this mail to those 10 percentage if I'm trying to create an alternative version and uh, maybe I'll be adding uh, a left logo uh, and uh, maybe uh, some other features uh, or other uh, content uh, the content will be the same but the design and uh, the interaction with this mail body will be different from that of the first one that is an alternate email will be added okay so the next 10 percentage of people will be receive the second alternate email and at the end of the session like uh maybe the final date will be provided as 25th so we have sent two uh, emails and we'll be able to compare the two emails so uh, on comparing these two emails we'll be able to find uh, which mail have the higher response rate so those with highest response rate will be considered as the winning email and the rest of the uh, recipients from the mail maybe the 80 percentage of the uh, recipients from the mailing list will get the uh, we, uh, the warm email okay so that is those email having the highest response rate will be uh, sent to the uh, most of the uh, people in the contact list so it's an actually an upsell technology uh, and here there will be an option uh, of 24 hours chat mailing reports so this feature means once an email is sent and after 24 hours it will send a statistics mailing report to the responsible so that they can check how their mailing is doing a day after it has been sent so this is another new feature in the mailing and uh, okay so will be having uh, some changes in the subscription modules knowledge module is another new module and the dashboard module and sign so let me give you a uh, basic idea on that for uh, subscription will be having uh, in the previous version subscription template instead of that we'll be using the plans and uh, we'll be uh, instead of creating different subscription plans to subscription products what will will do is that we'll be creating different uh, time based pricing based on the plan the price will be added so only one product or uh, one uh, recurrence plan is uh, required uh, and uh, it is no need to uh, keep separately uh, the template for monthly yearly and all then uh, comes the uh, knowledge module so uh, we have already done a detailed uh, video in the knowledge module so knowledge module is actually an addition to uh, our uh, udo where we'll be able to find a uh, lot of features like we'll be able to create uh, different type of articles this is actually inspired by wikipedia and we'll be able to create different articles and uh, um, and this can be shared among the uh, people uh, in our company or it can be shared among the internal user and even we can restrict maybe i'll be creating a private article so private article in the sense the article that will be available to me only and the article i can add the heading and add icons and uh, cover image and all will be able to add from the system and uh, i can add uh, like let's say new article and i'll be able to add more structures from here maybe a separator or uh, maybe um, columns called heading uh, direction can be switched links item list index outline table of content and all so once we have added once we have created an article we'll be able to share this that is we'll be able to share this to some internal people 
here you can see the access writer no other internal user have access i'll be able to uh, invite uh, this to uh, maybe to demo uh, to mark demo as well and it he can have only the read access so once you invite then invitation will be sent and you can see that article is now it's uh, shared and when you click on the share you can see two people are shared one can read and admin person can only write this so in this way we will be able to add the uh, access right and share this article if you want to uh, mark this as favorite you can uh, mark this as favorite and if you want to share this uh, among your workspace you can just drag this and drop to your uh, uh, workspace okay and also you will be able to log delete and create a copy and if you want to see this article in full width and the last update created it so this kind of details will be available and uh, when it comes to uh, dashboard module Okay, dashboard has a large changes that is we'll be able to create our own dashboards and we'll be able to add details to it so here you can see filters and that so let me show you that is let's create a dashboard so i'll be creating as uh, my dashboard okay so you can see this dashboard in the left side so here you'll be able to see the dashboard as i'm adding any data to my dashboard so first i'm going to documents module and let's create a spreadsheet document and uh, let's create a spreadsheet okay so i'll be having a blank spreadsheet and uh, i'll be adding this over here as uh, say employee data and i'll be mark it as start okay now i'll be moving to employee module and i can add the details uh, to uh, the dashboard uh, to the spreadsheet so uh, i just want to add uh, uh, the details to my spreadsheet i can even link the menu to spreadsheet so uh, let's uh let's see with the favorites if i'm trying to uh, uh insert uh menu in the uh, link uh, spreadsheet will be created as a menu and i can insert to the employee data so this is a employee data that is first 22 records are there and uh, let's save so you can see uh, this data will be filled with your uh, that is uh, the spreadsheet is filled with the uh, over here and maybe i'll be again moving to sales and if i'm uh, taking a pivot table maybe uh, using the yeah total itself uh, of let's again go to orders and uh, from the pivot table you can find the orders over here and the total amount and i can add this again to uh, the uh, spreadsheet that is employee data as well confirm okay so in the next sheet this data will be updated then what i can do is that i can copy this uh, spreadsheet control c and uh, i can paste it over here and also based on this uh, i can create a pie diagram or uh, some kind of charts as well maybe uh, i'll be creating charts or links okay so this is one chart based on the we i just require this too and uh, a chart is 
created and I can again copy this to uh, over here okay then uh, again based on this data maybe I'll be able to create uh, a scorecard okay uh, let's okay based on this total I can go to chart and uh, create uh, a scorecard maybe what I can do is that I can compare uh, one amount like uh, I'll be applying uh, 500,000 uh, this might be the my target value okay so based on this uh, baseline value uh, I can add uh, the baseline value as uh, say D6 okay so based on that uh, uh, I can compare uh, the difference that is change value from key or absolute value can be identified so I can compare this and uh, maybe percentage wise so this, kind, this uh, particular color will be uh, under design so you can see color as color value decreases it will be in the red color and if it is increases it will be in the uh, uh, like in the green color so I can add the uh, amount uh, title over here total so let's say it's the total revenue and uh, I can again copy this to my sheet over here and I can add this data to my dashboard so which is the dashboard and uh, uh, the section my dashboard let's create okay so this will be added to my dashboard uh, under the employee data section so in this way we'll be able to add and uh, configure our live data to dashboard and all then next is regarding the sign module in our sign module there will be few features like uh, it's me integration is the yeah in the configuration settings you'll be able to see uh, a default terms and conditions which means this default terms and condition will be appear in the signature request and there is it's me integration which allows the signatories to provide their identity using the it's me integration so this will be only available in the belgium and the netherlands and also will be able to set a signing order if multiple recipients are required to sign and also it is authentic we can authenticate by sms and also will be able to manage the template access as well so once i uh, enable this features and save and from the configuration settings i'll be able to upload the document to sign so it's loading okay so if i'm uploading one of the uh, template like i'll be using this uh, product uh, label so this is a uh, maybe let's say this is a, a, a template or the document where we require the signature so i can add the signature over here uh, i just take some um, arbitrary uh, document so you can uh, keep your actual document so i'll be adding three signatures so each signature is from different customer or you can maybe if you're adding this from your hr responsible okay so let's validate you can create this role uh, and uh, fields from the configuration itself like the signature different fields are like the, over here like the checkbox and all so that you can create and also 
uh, the things so here it is we'll be able to add the authorized groups and uh, when we try to send this you can see in the options you'll be having one option like can be refused okay can be refused in the sense uh, it will show that uh, the recipient will be having the ability to refuse a signature request okay so in this case here i'll be applying uh, one by company okay i'll be deleting this okay here one have to be uh, signed by the hr uh, responsible and one is by the company and while i'm sending under the options here you will be having the specify the assign, signing order maybe if uh, suppose a uh, consider the scenario like if you are sending the contract for our employee for in that contract employee need to be signed maybe we have uh, hr hr has to be manager and uh, there will be uh, employee manager maybe employee manager also need to be uh, signed so there will be three signing uh, processes there and we have to define who will be signed first maybe uh, maybe the employee need to be signed first then comes the manager then comes the uh, hr uh, responsible so we'll be able to define the uh, specifying order so here in this document i'll be adding hr responsible and company so uh, as i'm enabling this uh, signing order uh, will be having two uh, sections like uh, two options to add uh, who will be having the uh, one uh, to be signed first hr responsible or company so here we can add first hr responsible then the company okay and we can send so uh, the uh, mailing details like company details can be added i'll be added as uh, my company uh, san francisco okay i'll be just remove this and add another one 